What is going on guys, it's your boy Deathgun with another Monster Hunter World video. Today I'm going to be showing you guys the best gem and rare item farming build in the game. Not only that, but I'm also going to be giving you some tips and tricks to maximize your gains doing your grinds. As you guys know, I like getting multiple items as I do my grinds, so with this build and these tricks, you're going to be getting the most out of your grind. So without further ado, let's get right on to it. Alright, first off I'm going to be talking to you guys about my equipment. For our weapon I'm using the Kadachi Fang 3, but you can use any thunder weapon. It works really well with this set taking advantage of the Kirin armor pieces. For our helmet we had the Legiana Helmet B. It works really well giving us divine blessing in one slot. For our chest piece we have the Kirin Jacket B, finishing off our divine blessing and actually going a little over it in one slot. For our arms we have the Kirin Long Arms B giving us two slots and two points into thunder attack. For our waist, we have the Kirin Hoop B giving us 3 slots and 1 point into Blight Resistance. For our legs, we have the Legiana Greaves, which gives us 2 points into Ice Resistance in a level 2 slot. Now, for our Charm and our Mantle slots, we can use whatever you guys like. The main reason behind all this build is the Kirin Set Bonus and the Legiana Set Bonus. With that being said, everything works very nicely, so let's take a look at our skills. First off, we have the Kirin Favor, which gives you a higher chance of increased capture rewards, and the Legiana Favor, which gives you a good chance to actually get more loot from quest rewards. Now, let's get into the actual build. We have Attack Boost Level 4, which is really nice for not only the attack, but that 5% affinity. We have Divine Blessing, so we can survive a little more. And it might be a little weird, and it's interchangeable, the Health Boost. This keeps you alive a lot longer, seeing as the build is not focused around damage or defense. It's just a survivability grindy build. We have Level 3 Thunder Attack to max out our Thunder Damage, and Level 3 Critical Eye to give us 10% affinity, and with this build, it leaves me at 50% affinity. Ice Resistance and Blight Resistance are just added on. And last but not least, we have Protective Polish to keep the low blue sharpness bar going, and if you guys happen to put some Handicraft, you'll keep your white sharpness going for a very long time. Now let's take a look at the actual decorations. In our weapon, we have a Bolt Jewel to maximize our Thunder Damage. Very nice, and if you guys need more, there is actually some changes you can make to this build. In our helmet, we have our attack jewel to actually get 4 into our attack bonus and get our affinity bonus. In our chest and our arms, we have our vitality jewels, which give us more survivability, seeing as it's not really a build that's focused all around that. In our waist, we have 3 expert jewels to give us even more affinity, putting us at 50% affinity, and last but not least, the sharp jewel in our legs. Overall, if you're looking to change this build out, you can take out the Vitality Jewels and add more Elemental Jewels, more Attack Jewels, or whatever you want to add. Now, for the first and most basic tip I can give you guys, before you start hunting, find out by going into your Hunter Notebook what monster drops what. What you have to do to get it, whether it's capture, breaking parts, or carving. This is very important. The second main tip I want to give you guys is, if you're farming monster parts or gems, you do not want to do tempered investigations. You're going to want to do these investigations. The ones that give you gold and silver rewards. The reason for that is because these particular investigations have a higher chance to drop the rare materials the monster drops. So yeah guys, whether you're farming gems, wavering gems, specific monster parts, you know, plates, or whether you just want to get a ton of parts to make tons of zenny, this is the best thing you can do. Keep that in mind. It's very important and a lot of people always tend to go to tempered investigations and that's why they're not getting as many items as they should be getting. Now, let's take a look at our inventory. Apart from the average day potions that you should be carrying, you want to make sure that you have 4 traps on board. Yes, I said four. You want to make sure you have your shock trap, your pitfall trap, two trap tools, and enough ingredients, whether it's spider weapon, ivy, or thunderbug, to make two more traps. This is very important, seeing as the Kirin bonus works off capturing monsters. And last but not least, you need tranquilizer bombs. This is the final step to capturing your monster and making sure you get as much loot as possible. Keep in mind, you cannot capture Elder Dragons. I know it's basic information, but I still want to put it out there. One more tip I want to give you guys is making sure your Palico has the Plunder Blade equipped. The reason for this is because, well, not only does it give you more loot per run, but it has the chance to drop not only plates, but even rare gems. 
overall yielding more loot. And last but not least, I want to talk about food. Even though it's not really important, there are some skills you want to take into account to maximize your gains in case you're hunting down for that elusive gem and whatever you guys need. So you want to take into account two skills. First off is Feline Carver, which increases the number of times you can carve. This is if you're going for the kill. And if you're going for the capture, Lucky Cat, which sometimes increases the number of reward items you receive when completing a mission. Overall, these two bonuses are very nice. You can only have one or the other. So remember, one is for actual killing the monster, while the other one is for capturing. Overall, that's all there is to know when it comes to great rewards. Anything else you guys happen to know, make sure to drop it in the comment section below. But now let's talk about something serious. There's a lot of content that is going to be coming out. Recently, I've been very busy with some family situations and work, but don't worry about it. There will be tons of content. So I would like you guys to let me know what you want to see in the channel so I have a general idea. Even though I have a huge, huge list of ideas and videos I want to make, I still want to hear what you guys want me to make so I'm not putting out content just for the hell of it. Now, if you've enjoyed the video, make sure to smash that like button and subscribe for more Monster Hunter World content. For now, your boy Death Gun, out.